when you go through life and you take chances and you say the thing that's on your mind when it's not popular, sometimes it works out for you. Sometimes when you do things that people think are nuts, it's crazy, it works out for you. Today's topic is a little controversial. For some of you it's old hat, but hustling is the new career. During my transformation, so to speak, I became a purposeful job hopper. I did not keep a job after I had made the change of, you know, from being laid off to never again, that moment when I became Jewish. I picked jobs that gave me the skills for me to do what I wanted to do in my life versus me picking jobs just to survive. There was a plan. There was an architecture to my grand madness because people say, wait a minute, you just got that job. It's eight, nine months. You're already on another job? Because in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, there was something thought to be wrong with you if you couldn't keep a job for five, six, seven years, there was keep a job for three, four, five years, then move on. It didn't seem to be so flimsy. Now, fast forward to 2013, your ass might be changing jobs two times a year because of the disruptive economy. So hustling is actually the new career. There are reports and there's research that's saying that the average person's probably going to have 10 to 20 jobs in their lifetime. If you compare and contrast that to the old economy, sometimes people had one or two jobs for a lifetime. Then it went up to three to four. Then it went up to maybe five or six. Then now it's whatever. So how do you reorientate yourself to hustling? Because the thing is, with the hustling, it's throwing off people from the old economy because they're just like, wait a minute, this is messing with my narrative of if I'm a good person, I'm a good employee, I don't job hop. That's a mind fuck for them. And for the people who are up and coming, they really don't have anything long enough to get some traction, to really start feeling like they're making their way in the world. Because it's like, you're doing your job, companies bought out. Sales go down. Something happens and your head's on the chopping block. Sometimes you just are terrified because of the whispers that are going on in the corridors of your corporation. You don't even want to go to work because that day may be your last. A lot of stress. Well, this is how I handled the stress. I embraced it. Because if you are in this disruptive economy right now, you have to understand a few things. One, unless you have your own company, unless you have sat down and charted out your future, a lot of these things that are happening are way beyond your control because you have jumped into the sandbox of someone else. You've jumped into a matrix where you don't even know the rules, but they still apply to you. And if you create any type of transgression, the bitch slap is on. So embrace change. Start doing the very things that you are afraid to do. If you're in a situation right now where you may be laid off, instead of going to work with your heart in your throat, start planning. Start planning right now. Start saying, okay, do worst case scenario planning today. I have this job. You start doing inventory asset inventory. I mean, you start inventorying your assets. You start inventorying your cash flow. You're just like, okay, I have X amount of dollars in the bank. If I get laid off today and no, I, I'm getting nothing. I'm getting no severance package. The best I can hope for is unemployment. And for some people, they may not even get that because they didn't work long enough or they used it up from the last time. What are they going to do? 
Ask yourself that difficult, challenging, crazy question today because I have to ask myself that question all the time in my business because when I first started here in 2009 on YouTube, I knew the storage auction information book thing wasn't going to go on as robustly as it was forever. At one point, it was bananas. But I was like, hey, I rolled it and rolled it and rolled it. But in the back of my mind, I said, okay, someday this is going to end. You know, I had people say, hey, you could do this. You could partner with this group. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The storage auction books, the storage auction stories, are actually the last things that I wanted to write. I took inventory of the marketplace and I was like, okay, I want to be a writer, but hold on. For me to sit down and write this self-indulgent book on my childhood might be a great exercise in personal discovery and it can also be an exercise in bankruptcy. One of the things that many writers fail to understand is the market gives a fuck about how you feel. The market only cares about how it feels. So based on my experience of being out there in the storage auction world, I knew that new people had no clue. Boom, the book was born. But I am now actually glad that I can start working on other stuff. And it's like, it's after four years. In a few days, August 6th, be my fourth year on YouTube. And it's an amazing journey that still has a lot of legs into it. So what I'm telling you is, you might have to do that thing that you're not like really crazy about, but it may have some beautiful results. So I want you to think about that. While you're doing your asset inventory, and that, you know, once the assets, you know, cash flow, how much credit you have on your credit cards, you know, because I, I pull up a video, check it out, you know, what to do when you're laid off. Now, you can start doing that stuff now before you get laid off. And what it's going to do is bring a certain peace of mind because it's not going to remove the stress or the angst of being laid off. But it will give you a level of preparation so you don't go into that free fall of depression and, oh, fuck, what am I going to do now, planet? Panic planning is usually not the best. There's a lot of people that's like, hey, I do really well under stress. And there are some people that do, but you've actually trained yourself to only perform when you're stressed out. That's not a good way to go. Not at all. So let's go back to hustling is the new career. Knowing, you know, if you're a person that's 20 something or 30 something, understand unless you build your own business, and even with that, Marketplaces change, conditions change. So just just embrace it. I had this ideal in my head in 2009, the summer of 2009, I was going to write books. And then ebooks came out. Well, ebooks were out before I started writing. And ebooks, and then audiobooks, and then this book, and this book. And the thing is, I have to really stay aware of what's going on in my sphere because. It's relevant to me, whether I like it or not. Doesn't matter if I like it. That's what's going on in the spirit. That's what's going on in the space. And I have to be aware of it. Now, for you, let's talk about hustling. For many people, hustling is a dirty, dirty word. Hustling is, I'm not a hustler. I'm a good person. Hustling is exploiting opportunity for personal gain. If that makes you a bad person, then everyone you know is a bad person. Every comp corporation that is out there is a bad person. Only people that are not bad people are charitable organizations, and sometimes they're exploiting something to get something for their charitable cause. So, with hustling, you've got to think of yourself as a guerrilla warfare type person. Because right now, that's what's going on. You have two fronts. There's the economic guerrilla warfare, and there's the mental guerrilla warfare. There's, there's two assaults that are going on, one on your mind and one in your pocket. And if you're not aware, you can be enslaved by both. Now, with this, you know, hustling as a career, you have something that you may have in your job, but a lot of people don't. You have a tremendously high level of accountability. Your accountability level just, it rises. Because one of the things is, and I, I will tell you this, you know, just to help you, 
If you have a job and you're looking for a part-time, if you could snag a sales job where there's quotas, get it. And they're like, I don't want to do that. Fuck that. Get it. Because when you have quotas and you have someone psh, psh, cracking that whip across your ass, that's accountability like you ain't never. Some of the sales jobs I had, it was freaking like, I didn't want to go in on Monday because I knew the reaming was about to happen because my numbers were funky. My numbers were like laughing at themselves. It's like, I ain't shit. That's how bad the numbers were. And I had to sit there and take it. And after one reaming, I was just like, what can I do to improve this situation? Because I'm not going through this again. Because it was either get better or quit. Or be fired. You know, that, those. it was just three real choices. And the really positive one was to get better because that was going to help me. So I got better. I started buying books. Uh, someone asked me about what was the name of the cold calling book. I cannot remember. All I can tell you is it had a red and black cover and it was about that thick. Um, I'll try to find it. But I bought that book and my appointment setting rate went bam. It quadrupled in a month. And it was just a simple little book. And I was like, well, if this book did this, what if this book did you, You've got to start taking ownership and accountability of your hustle. Because this is the thing. Going back to some earlier videos, we, you were indoctrinated to be a worker. You were not indoctrinated to be a thinker. So as you crank up your mind to thinking and being accountable, there's going to be some friction. Your brain may heat up from the hot. You may you'd be like, whoa, my head is hot. Because your, your brain is, term, is turning on. And all those things are starting to move. And for some of you, they haven't moved in a long time. They haven't moved since you were in school. Because you've just been... I'm just coasting. You know, I would say grooving. But no, you're just coasting. Grooving means, you know, you're putting a little effort into it. Now, with hustling as a career... You have to think of yourself as a corporation. You are you, Inc. And you have to look at what does your corporation have to offer to the other corporations out there. Because when you start looking at yourself in those terms versus, I'm just a good person. I'm just a wonderful person. No, you're not. You're an asset. And the more valuable that you make yourself, the more valuable that you will be to the other corporations that are all around you. And they will exchange their time, their money, their emotions, all these things with you if you provide some kind of value. And going forward, understand, this disruption is going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse because two things are happening. The level that jobs are being decimated by technology is going to do a hockey stick move because this right now is just like going like that and there's going to be this point where it's going to technology is going to intersect and it's just going to hop straight up it's going to do a vertical because technology to me is wonderful I look at it as a great opportunity I look at it as I can't wait I think this are going to you know these are going to be awesome times but for a person who is afraid of technology, who doesn't really understand what's going on, these are some scary ass times. These are times that people are like, they don't, they got the cover up here, and they don't they're just like they don't want to get out of bed because it's so crazy out there. Don't be that person. Embrace change. Look at technology instead of being pimped by technology. Pimp technology for your own personal benefit and gain. Because, understand, this train is going to pick up speed. You think that train that was in Spain that all those people unfortunately died was going fast? It's nothing compared to what this technology train is going to start driving. You thought you saw change? Understand, I'm a child of the 70s. I remember when people had one phone. I remember when cable television came on. Yes, I'm that old. I remember when MTV came on. I was right there and I was like, ooh, pretty girls shaking their booties. It was a great thing for me. I remember when places were closed on Sunday. 
Remember the big in Birmingham there was this big thing because the mall started opening on Sunday and people are like, it's the end of the civilization. I mean, folks were like going in. And I saw this stuff happening. And it happens over a gradual period of time. When I really think about the change that's happened in the last five years, there's been more change in the last five years than it was in that 25-year period. It's going to accelerate. It's going to, it's going to get faster. It's going to be it's going to be on steroids. Now, you have a choice here. If you look at your hustling as a career, that you might be doing something that you really like right now. I don't know what it is. But if it's not something that provides long-term benefit to the other corporations out there, you could do it as a hobby. You could do it for personal pleasure. But doing it to make money may not be in the cards. And I know that's going to be really hard for some people to understand or to accept. And that's the beauty of being a corporation. You can have that thing and you can have other divisions, other lines, other offices. You can incorporate you and do other things. Don't limit yourself. That's why when you treat hustling as a career, and everything's internal. It's like, I'm a hustler. And then you put your offerings out to those other corporations. The center axis is you. That never changes. The benefits that your hustling gets you is back to you. That never changes. So how you hustle, the products you hustle, the services you offer, probably will change. But the benefit always comes back to you because you're in the conductor seat. You're driving that train. Versus being a passenger on one that's running out of control. And that's where a lot of people feel. Because, you know, the hair is blowing, the wind is blowing in their hair because the windows are open and the train's moving. And they're just holding on to the seat all white knuckled. Or, you know, in my case, brown knuckled. Ah! Because they haven't thought about how to incorporate their life. They're too busy working for other corporations to actually sign the paperwork. To create the articles of incorporation. They haven't done that. Because they're looking over here. And some of you might have to give up your weekends for the next two years. To get this thing going. But mark my words. When you're prepared. And when the stuff happens. You're going to sit back and go. Oh my God. I am so glad that I gave up those weekends. Because it's a small price to pay to ensure that you gain the skills that you need to be more competitive in the incoming disruptive economy. Now, let's talk about your levels of hustling as a career. You got your junior hustler. You know, this is a person who's side hustle, has got this going on, but always has that main job because that's a narrative. I was actually taught that as a kid. You know, you have some little side hustle, but you always have your main gig for the man. I was actually told that, you know, I was given that nonsense. I'm going to take it a step further. You're a side hustler with the intent and the bent to go maintain, you know, you know, full-time hustling. I know it's a scary thing, full-time hustling. But once again, when you take it apart and you start looking at what do you need to do to get to that point, because, you know, for a lot of folks, I get a lot of, like I said, uh, questions about insurance. And I only give advice on insurance because insurance is like a hydra. It's a nine-head hydra. There are so many variables that I can say one thing that will be appropriate for two people and totally be jacked up for the other 98. You have to go out and call these insurance companies and say, hey, what are your criteria? Get quotes. I suggest you call up 10 if you can in your area. 10, figure out the deal, check your state laws. And there's this new thing called boutique medicine where you can get a doctor, you pay a monthly fee, and the doctor's not accepting insurance, you pay them directly. So there's a lot of stuff coming out there. But once again, that's a part of the disruptive economy. Even doctors are getting caught up in this. Physicians, they too. Uh, I understand there's some doctors who can make a gang of money by going out to become a healthcare provider out in the middle of nowhere. You know, there are people making three, four, five hundred thousand going out to the sticks. But once again, quality of life. If you are someone with a burning desire to be a doctor, that's really cool. And actually, you're probably going to enjoy it. 
But if you're someone like me, it would kill you. You'd be like, I don't want to be out here. The people are nice, but damn, I miss the city. And, you know, that's that trade-off. But when you start, once again, taking ownership of your hustle and start preparing for it and start really, really, really creating a plan, I can tell you from experience, you can make a full-time living from hustling. I'm not talking the hand-to-mouth living. I'm not talking living in the hood. I'm talking a very good living depending on what you have to offer, how much you've developed yourself. Because I looked at what the money I used to make in the 90s versus the money I made in, you know, because the 90s were okay, then they went to shit. But from 2000 on, life got lovely. But there was something that happened. Each year, I became a more valuable corporation. Self-study, reading books, going to seminars, actually taking the time to realize that, hey, this is deficient. This is a problem. Like right now, I'm working on editing. Because, you know, if you're going to be a writer, sure, you're going to need some outside. But, I mean, it's just part of what you have to do. Do I like it? No. My eyes go, ah! But... That's now. Five years from now, I could be the shit. But if I don't put in the time and effort to my hustle now, I'm not going to yield those benefits later. That's what so many people, they're trying to leapfrog over now to where they want to be and just totally obliterate the grooming process. It's not going to happen. We're not in the matrix yet where they plug that thing in the back of your head and you're like, ah, you get it? No, we're not there. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Probably won't be this thing that's plugs in your head, but put some sensors on and you will download a new skill of talent. You might see that in our li lifetime. You might be the person to develop that technology because it's coming. And see, that's just another thing that you know if you really are a technology buff, there's going to be new products, new services, new economies created. You could be part of that. If you're looking at, oh, Lord, oh, my God, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And, you know, I used to have the goat, and the goat left me, and my skills left me, and I'm up here in the mountain by myself. That's a choice. You want to be goat man, or you want to be hustle man? I want to be hustle man, playing my kazoo. I don't care. Laugh at me if you want to, because as long as I'm hustling, I'm making moves. As long as I'm making moves... I have time to sit back, study, gain information, and make even more moves in the future. That's what happens when you think of hustling as a career. Not something to do, not something to get a little extra scratch, but hey, you know, I'm a hustler. You know, I'm a hustler. When I did this YouTube channel, and I did it to the derision of many people, I was like, hey, I created this channel to sell you products. People like, ah, you're wrong. You just want money. Damn fucking Skippy, I want money. So do you. You're just gutless and don't have the courage to ask for it. That's not my problem. That's yours, and I refuse to adopt it. I had that little child at one point, and I had to euthanize it. Yep, had to get rid of that bastard because that little motherfucker was not serving me well in my life. And it's probably not serving you because understand is I put up before, you know, what's your relationship with money? And that could be keeping you from being as successful as you have the potential to be because you have this jacked up money relationship. You think money is like a redheaded stepchild or something bad in your life. But understand if you treat hustling as a career. And you are the axis, the center point of all that. This daunting change won't be so daunting. Because you're like, anything that I do, any way that I make it, any way that I build it, any way that I stack it, it benefits me. I'm going to give you a quick math lesson. If you have a product that's $25, say your product costs you 5 bucks to make. That's a $20 profit, right? If you sell that to 2,000 people on a planet, let's just keep it to the United States, of a country of 310 million, if you sell that $25 product to 2,000 people, 
that's fifty thousand dollars take off the expenses of 10 G's that's forty thousand dollars are you balling out of course not can you live oh hell yes you can and if you can sell two thousand products you can turn around and sell four thousand that's eighty thousand dollars in your pocket you sell two thousand you sell four thousand you can sell six you get up six thousand it's one hundred twenty thousand in your pocket. You haven't sold millions. You just sold thousands, not even tens of thousands, just thousands, and you've created yourself an extremely lucrative income hustling. And it's out there. It's out there all day, every day, all day long, every day. It's out there. You just have to take ownership of your hustle and stop pussyfooting around and not define yourself. Because that's just another thing. A lot of people are undefined. It's like they're defined by their job. They're defined by their family. But they're not defined by self. So they're like a little boy that has his anchor chain broken and they're just kind of bobbing around over here, bobbing around over there, bobbing around over there. Because they haven't said, this is it. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing, you know? I'm a content creator. Cause, and that's once again, when I first started in 2009, I was a writer. I'm a content creator. I write, I make videos, and I do podcasts. I create content. And I own that shit and I do it well. And some people, oh, there he goes, he's self-aggrandizing again. Fuck you. If you don't have the courage to say that what you do is good, that's because you haven't worked on that shit. I'm sorry, I don't live at the church of humble, meek, and stupid. I'm not going to say anything good about myself. That's your psychosis, not mine. Once again, that's another thing I refuse to adopt, and I never had that one. That little child was too bad to come up in my house. But the deal is, if you work really, really hard, and you become really, really good at something, you earn the right to treat it any way you want to. There's this notion that people want you to adopt their value system, and when you don't adopt that value system, for some reason, you're an asshole. It's like, well, you know, I don't think we should speak loudly about our accomplishments. Well, I fucking do. I think you should scream it from the rooftops, because in this new economy, if you don't know how to market yourself, what's that sound on Pac-Man? <laughs> That's your ass. Keep on being meek and quiet and don't say anything. And then that person you talked about and whispered about, he's so stupid, blah, 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 blah. That person passes you. Happens every day because they had the courage to raise their paw and like, I want to be put on. No, I'm not ready, but I want it. I'm going to try it. Whereas your perfect, talented ass didn't have the courage to put yourself out there. This is a common story in the human condition. There are people out there who are burning with talent, but laced with cowardice. And they can't move forward. So if you want to treat your hustle as a career, get serious about it. Put some energy and effort into it. Because when you do, the rewards are incalculable. And I can tell you that from experience. All right. This is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.